welcome to Scale Your Sales podcast. Have you ever thought, I'm not in sales, so why do I need to know about selling? Well, today we have got Niraj Kapoor, author of Everybody Works in Sales. Now, he has trained over 100 companies from micro businesses, entrepreneurs, SMEs, and corporates like Barclays, Sainsbury's, Santander, and Univers University of Buckingham. He teaches selling with integrity, and it still gets the results. Raj, Niraj, <laughs> I'll cut that bit out. That's Niraj fine. also speaks at events and conferences in the UK. Welcome to Scale Your Sales podcast, Niraj. Janice, it's lovely to be talking to you. It's also great to see you again. I think we last saw each other about April time. Um, at so, the Sales Innovation yes, Expo, yeah. A long time, yes. Yeah, we There's chat pretty much every conference. week, but yeah. <laughs> yeah I know. Uh, online, yeah. I'm, we're big on online, so we do see each other quite often, so it seems quite familiar. <laughs> Niraj, tell me more about what you do for your clients, what uniquely you do for your clients. Most clients come to me to say, okay, I want to make more sales. I don't know how. How do I do it? I don't really want to make more sales because it makes me feel uncomfortable. That's what clients say to me. People don't like selling because of the association of sales and the, you know, oily kind of salespeople, especially salesmen. And they come and say, okay, what do I do? How do I sell without picking up the phone <laughs> or without talking to people? And I always say to them, well, first of all, it's, it's very hard to sell without picking up the phone. And so what I'll do is I try to find out what situation they're in and try and find out, okay, where do they want to get to? And I simply fill in the sales gap. And what surprises me is whether it's a, a micro business or an SME or even a large corporate, most of the problems are, are really the same. Uh, people can't use LinkedIn effectively. Um, most people are not aware of how they sound on the phone. And most people have no idea how bad they are at presenting. <laughs> you know, they really they have not a clue of their body language, their voice, their tone. And these are really simple things to fix. And yet, it's a problem that most people have. So tell me more about selling with integrity. Well, a lot of people when they're selling, you know, two things happen. A, they speak far too much and they're not even aware of what they're saying. Half the time they just keep talking and talking. But selling with integrity is about selling with honesty, not 80% honesty or 90%, but 100%. And it's making promises that you can always deliver on. And I see, you know, I've worked in corporate companies where I've seen bosses say, just say this and we'll try and deliver it. That's not selling. That's lying. And you should always, anytime you speak to a client, promise something, always 100% be able to deliver it exactly the way you've said it. And that's very important. That to me is integrity. Excellent. So I love the title of your book, Everybody Works in Sales. So tell me more about how you came up with the title and, and more about your book. Uh, the book title originally was called uh, My Sales Life, and my PA Nicholas said to me, that's a terrible title, please change it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your PA. Yeah, no, Nick, Nicholas fantastic. That's why I have a PA. I see a lot of people have PAs who just do what they tell them to. Uh, and to me, that's not what a PA is about. A PA is somebody who obviously does what you ask them to, but will also challenge you and say, I'm not really sure about that. Have you thought about this? And that's why I love Nicholas, because she does that. And she says, look, I don't like your book title. Your book cover is beautiful your title's not good enough so we brainstormed some ideas and i said nick i think 11th or 12th title i mean nicola everybody works in sales what should the title be <laughs> and she goes there's your title dummy i'm like okay you're right um and, and that's how it came about um and also you know i speak to people who are account managers or lawyers or accountants and they say look we're not really sales people i'm like but you are actually salespeople because accountants have to sell, lawyers have to sell, account managers have to sell, business owners have to sell, people in HR have to sell to convince people to come work for them. Everybody works in sales, but just most people don't really, I don't think they're very aware of it, <laughs> you know. And especially sales is, is business, you know, it's, it's the engine of the business. If you're not selling, you don't have an engine, you're not going to go anywhere. So it's absolutely crucial that everyone's aware of that. So that's why I absolutely love your advice. 
Oh, thank you. Look, sales is the foundation of your business. It's not just the British economy. It is the foundation of your business. And most people need to understand that more. People are so obsessed about Google AdWords and, and you know, doing the right amount of social media. And that's important, of course. But if you're not making sales, you do not have a business. Absolutely. Absolutely. And because it is the foundation of your business, it's the engine of your business. You know, you need to actually invest a lot more time on it. Would you agree? Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you want to do anything, if you want to learn a musical instrument, you have to spend time practicing it. If you want to learn a language, you have to spend weeks, sometimes months learning it. I have friends that learn languages. It takes them anywhere from a few months to a simple language like French to several months for a really complicated language like Mandarin or Japanese. Yet when people have sales jobs or have to sell, they will either wing it, <laughs> which is a terrible <laughs> idea, or they'll watch one or two YouTube videos, which their boss tells them to, and then wing it again, which is again, it's a terrible idea. Or they just talk non-stop about themselves which is a terrible idea pretty much every every every, every time i walk into a company and i see people selling uh, i'm like wow that's really i can't believe how bad it is i mean really it, it's generally overall pretty awful um because what i do is when i go into companies that the bosses kind of give me their opinion and i say okay before i start i want to spend time on the sales floor I want to hear some of the sales conversations, just observe and make some notes and things like that. And people consistently do the same thing. They don't ask questions, they don't research the client, and they talk far too much. And this is consistent across every industry, by the way. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I've, I've discovered that quite a lot. It's quite enlightening, isn't it? Just being in the room. Fantastic. Um, I've founded Scale Yourselves, which enables companies to embrace the changing dynamics between buyers and sellers. So tell me what's your view on this relationship and how it's changed. What I see is people who are buying are becoming a bit more savvy. Uh, they tend to do a lot more research now, uh, whereas sellers haven't really got more savvy at all. They still just try and sell by email. And ultimately, in most businesses, people buy people. They just do. And therefore, it often involves a conversation with somebody. If you're a big global brand, like a, like a Tony Robbins, I spent £2,000 seeing Tony Robbins live for four days. It was amazing. But I didn't have to talk to anybody. It's Tony Robbins. But for most people, they don't have that kind of global brand. So you need to talk to an individual in between and say, OK, I got to develop a relationship with this person. Do I want to speak to this person? And quite often, I've spoken to really good brands but the salesperson has been so bad, I thought, nah, <laughs> I'm not, not going to speak to you now. And I, I think it's a shame. And I think if more people knew how to actually sell, or should I say, actually listen and help people, which is really what selling is. It's listening, it's helping people, it's advising people. That's what sales is. And I think if more people understood that, instead of associating sales with a, a, a bad car salesman or the wolf of Wall Street, <laughs> I think that would be much more appropriate. Excellent. Yes, I agree with you. What about diversity? You know, we're both black and, you know, we're working in a sales environment. What do you think has changed? Do you think there's still issues that need to be resolved? Do you think it's an important issue that needs to be taken forward? What's your view? I've been really lucky because I work in London. So I in London, it isn't too bad, as say, as compared to when you leave London. So I've actually been really lucky, Janice, in all fairness. Um, but I do know that I've also been lucky in the sense that most of my bosses have been women. So they've always been big believers of diversity in the workplace. Um, when I worked in shipping in 2011, it was like an all-male environment. And once we started bringing in female salespeople, all of a sudden, not only did the office dynamic become more interesting, we started generating more sales. So I'm a big believer in having more equality in the workplace and having people of different religions in the workplace. But ultimately, it's down to the quality of the person. That, that, that has to be there. The character of the person, for me, comes first. But at the same time, I think companies should be more aware about having more equality in the workplace. I, I absolutely um, ag agree with you. And it's really interesting that you say that, you know, your, your women bosses, you know, have had uh, an influence on the, the culture, the diversity of the culture. Um, and, you know, one thing that I think is really important that we often see, you know, women on boards and you've got the token one um, and you need three a critical mass of three in order to have a real uh, impact in an organization. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've actually seen that in, in action that you might get the one person, but it's actually when you get the two or three that's really started to change the, the culture. 
Well, in my first, look at my first three jobs, which lasted 23 years, the, the bosses were women and they were the decision makers. And that's quite unusual. So that's why I say I got quite lucky because a lot of men can't work for women because it hurts their fragile egos. <laughs> it does. Um, and I've been quite lucky. I grew up with a strong mother, a very strong grandmother. Um, you know, I have an incredibly strong daughter. You know, I, I surround myself with strong women. I, I'm not intimidated by their intelligence. I actually gravitate towards it and appreciate it. So it doesn't scare me like it does most men. So when I have female bosses, I don't think, oh my God, she's really scary. You know, I'm like, she's brilliant. She's more successful than me. I'm going to learn from her and do better. You know, Carla McCall, the CEO of The Guardian, uh, Lindsay Roberts, the CEO of Informa, a FTSE 250 company, which is often the FTSE 100, and Annie Swift was boss of uh, Marketing Week for 10 years. So I've always had female bosses, and I saw them, and they were dynamic, and they were tough. And being tough's okay, as long as you're tough but fair. And they were always tough but fair. And ultimately, they always treated me very well because I worked really hard. Uh, because I had integrity and I always did what was best for the business. I find a lot of people in sales do what's best for their commission target, whereas I always did what was best for the business and that's why I always got further ahead. It wasn't because I was outstanding or a genius or an actual salesperson because I'm really not. I had to learn it like everybody else. Um, but certainly when I got coached in 2011, that took me to a different level. I went from being above average to being great i guess jim collins would call it good to great yeah. uh, because when you get a coach and you have somebody working with you it just takes you to another level mm. and then all of a sudden i started coaching other salespeople, and they started doing great i'm like i'm onto something here <laughs> and, and and that also all of a sudden i went from being somebody who was a full-time salesperson to a part-time salesperson and a part-time sales manager who coached other people and that's what i do even to today you know i spend most of my time coaching people but i still go out and sell with my clients and that's really really important a lot of people i see coaching haven't sold for years and they're a bit out of touch uh, whereas i still go out with my clients and actually sell and that's so important because it means i'm really in touch with what's happening at the moment mm -hmm. I, I just want to in investigate um you having a female bosses and feeling the real benefit from that and that the, what you said about those many men that are intimidated by it and are quite critical of it how do we start to change that because you know we need both men and women but and we have to uh, collaborate so you know understanding that a lot of men are you know and especially in the sales environment it's, it's still the majority of men and sales leaders are men but mm -hmm. how can we start to change this Great question. I have been to a few women-only conferences by invite, surprisingly enough. Um, I spoke at a hospitality event recently where 90% of the delegates were women. I was, I was really honored to be invited to it. Um, and so that's almost like a switching it the other way around. But I find that when you put somebody different in a new environment, people often learn from it. And I certainly think that a lot of sales leaders, if they actually work with more uh, female sales trainers, that will make a big difference and if they actually spoke to more senior female speakers that would make a difference i think a lot of people because they're so obsessed with i must make target i must make money i must make target they're sometimes unaware of like a lot of people think like this but they should be thinking like this if you know what i mean mm -hmm. and that's something that's i would call it a slow burn um, but it, it does take time. And I think the second thing is a lot of salespeople my age, I've just turned 47, and so many salespeople I know are becoming irrelevant. I'm talking men because they're not moving with the times. They're not embracing LinkedIn. They still want to work with other sales men, not women. And most of them have lost their jobs or they're now, they've taken a jobs now in business development or account management so they're taking big pay cuts because they couldn't do their jobs anymore and that's kind of interesting I've seen that happen quite a lot in the last six months and so people need to be aware if you don't move with the times you're going to lose out massively you really are yeah and that's why I absolutely love working with that dynamic because you can see me a black woman walking in they think oh you know what can I learn from her but I absolutely mm -hmm. love especially with social media you know like um to get the light to switch on to get them to see it's it's so much more than you know someone posting about their their lunch it's an excellent business tool that they can utilize and I think it's actually finding the key of doing something 
that somebody likes to do. So someone might like Twitter or someone might like LinkedIn or, or posting videos, but it's actually finding the one thing that they enjoy doing and they can show off a little bit. Um, and, you know, just tailoring it so they're always giving value. I absolutely love to do that with someone that's like, well, you know, this is not for me kind of thing. It's brilliant, isn't it? When you can really, you can see, especially, you know, you and I as speakers, when you can see the light bulb switching on. I mean, that is absolutely oh, It's fantastic. Look, I support you because we're, we're both people of colour, so I support you. But the reason I keep talking to you isn't because you're a person of color it's because when you speak you give a you have so much passion uh, and also b you give so much value that's why i keep in touch with you <laughs> and that's really important and whenever you can help even just one person in a room it, it makes all the difference you think wow i'm doing my job properly because a lot of the time people do their jobs and people don't really appreciate you a lot of the time you do your job but if you do a job and somebody comes and says thank you it's one of the greatest feelings in the world yeah 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 and what you say about integrity it's not just you know uh in a sales environment it's living it isn't it it's just in your every being you know being kind of generous and, and open and you know i know you're always bigging up people always bigging up people on, on social media so you kind of got to live your own values and that's how you sell and that's the thing you know that people engage with and that's why people buy from you Thank you. No, it's, it's so it's so true. I spend a lot of time supporting uh, colleagues, some of whom I've just met a few times, but some of whom I know very well because I want them to do well. You know, sales, a lot of people don't understand sales is about generosity and it's about spirit and it's about helping others as well. And I spend a lot of time helping people because I generally want them to do well. I don't see a lot of the sales trainers as competition, even though they kind of are. Um, I see them as friends as well and colleagues, and I generally want them to do well. So I'm happy to support their books. I'm happy to say, hey, go see Jana speak at this conference. Hey, buy Dan Disney's new book because you're friends of mine. I've had drinks with you. I've had dinners with you, but we've spent time connecting and sharing best practices. And to me, that's very important. Yeah, I, I agree with you. So what's the one tried and tested strategy that you can offer our listeners? Just one? <laughs> <laughs> God. Okay, and let me see if I can give it in a sentence. Listen and give value and support others. There you go. <laughs> I, got, I, I got seven it's words in one, one sentence. sentence. One sentence. You have that, the that's fine. in there. So it's yeah, if I can get away with that, I'll be very happy. But yeah, most salespeople don't listen. Mm. Uh, most often don't think of the value they can give. They sell the features of their product. They don't sell the benefits and the value. And, um, you know, help other people. Give people shout outs, give people LinkedIn recommendations when they do a fantastic job. I mean, I did one uh, literally two weeks ago uh, for someone who just was really nice, really supportive to me. I just gave him a LinkedIn recommendation. He picked up the phone and called me saying, oh my God, thank you so much. That was so kind of you. I said, hey, you were really nice and generous to me. I just thought it was a nice thing to do rather than just sending me a thank you email, which is so boring. <laughs> I just thought I'd do something a bit nicer than that. And normally I do like a thank you card or a LinkedIn recommendation. That's just the kind of thing I do, which makes me stand apart from other salespeople out there certainly does certainly does so who's your hero or shero and why i've got a lot um but i was to pick one bruce springsteen uh mainly because i'm into massively into rock music um up until 15 years ago i had hair <laughs> so you can't tell that now but um i like him because he stands up for what he believes in he has integrity he, he he lives what he loves and he also spends a lot of time making the world a better place through his charity work which is what i do as well for my free time whether i'm being an ambassador for the hospital or or raising money or supporting friends through just giving so he lives the life i aspire to if you like but he's done it consistently for the last 40 years yeah yeah. So tell us how we can contact you. Um, the best way is through everybodyworksinsales.com, just as it's spelt in the book, everybodyworksinsales.com, um, or through LinkedIn. Excellent. Thank you so much. It's really been an honour. I've enjoyed the conversation with you. Thank you for being a guest on Scale Your Sales podcast. Absolute pleasure. Always lovely catching up with Janice, and I'll see you next week on Twitter, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Can't be avoided, I'm afraid. It really can't be. And plus, I do quite enjoy speaking to you on Twitter as well. So there you go. Me too.